Well, hello, 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 and welcome back. Time again to talk about a new product. Last time we were here, it was about Clipper, which is all about loudness management, trimming off the peaks of audio. This one's also a loudness thing, but it's kind of more interesting and more clever in some ways. It's called Compactor, and it's a take on a particular loudness maximizing process called ring mod side chaining, which aims to more accurately and efficiently carve out space from one track, say your bass, to make room for another, like your kick. Traditional methods like sidechain compression or LFO tool type ducking both leave decibels on the table and milliseconds here and there where they're reducing gain more or less than necessary. And while they're also versatile and creative tools, if the thing you want to do is easily and perfectly maximise your signals in relation to one another, compactors what you need. See, what's going on here is that your target signal, your carrier, let's say the bass, wants ducking to prioritise the kick as and when it hits, but we want the most power possible out of both. So we feed in the kick on the sidechain as our modulator, and sample by sample, the amplitude of the bass is reduced by exactly the amount that's needed by the kick at that instant, if they're both going to fit under the threshold. So say the amplitude of the bass at any given sample is 0.5, if the kick has an amplitude of 0.6 at that same moment, and the maximum is 1, the bass gets reduced to 0.4 to accommodate the kick, precisely. This simply means more loud more of the time, and also it means no guessing and approximating and misspent energy. It also means distortion, especially in extreme circumstances this will have audible consequences. And that's fine if that's the style you're going for, it can be quite good fun. But it's also possible to back off from this extreme precision very gradually, to keep 95% of the accuracy while softening off on the artefacts. You can do that by adding a tiny amount of attack look ahead, or a slight hold or release time, to smooth things out in the time dimension. Or using the range you can soften in the amplitude dimension, do slightly less gain reduction. So the way to think about it is that you can be mathematically and surgically precise in the prioritization of your sounds, even setting up multiple layers of priority, with the output of your kick-optimized bass in turn acting as the side chain for the next most crucial layer, like some ambience or pad stuff maybe. Or you can back off on the intense perfection in a very controlled manner, compromising only very slightly and staying as close to that technical maximum as reasonably possible while minimising undesirable sonic distortion. In practice, there are all kinds of cool things you can do with something like this. For example, if you have a bass sound with a strong mono core, but also some interesting vibe in the sides, it can be tricky to make the most of both elements. If it's loud enough that the subtler side information can be heard, the transient mid can clip like crazy with the sides present too. But if you turn down, you lose the flavour of the sides. So set up the mids and sides separately, either from the start in phase plant or by separating them on two DAW tracks using channel mixer or something. Now you can have the mid information duck the sides very surgically and precisely to allow both to be absolutely as loud as they can in the listener's perception without actually ever exceeding the ceiling and without lost energy in the imperfect timing or gain reduction of compression or LFO ducking gives you more yum and more loud, all the things we want. Another thing worth thinking about is that maximising drums and bass to your final limiter level using traditional methods sounds loud and present, but it means nothing else can be loud. There's no headroom left before your master limiter needs to step in, with all the compromise that entails. With Compactor, you can effectively set a lower threshold volume for your most forward mix elements, drums and bass in this case, while having it sound just as big because you're not wasting a load of energy with suboptimal ducking. That leaves you with a few dBs of headroom that your airy, ambient elements can play in without damage, even when the kick hits. It actually makes your mixes breathe more. But besides all that, Compactor can just be a super versatile clipper or limiter. You don't have to send a second signal in on the sidechain. You can just cut the tops off your peaks as gently or aggressively as you please, and finely tweak time and range for more or less effect. Tiny amounts of look ahead can be a game changer. And an inter-sample peak mode can solve all kinds of technical problems on your way out of a mix. 
You've also got this stereo knob, which allows processing of stereo inputs with essentially a separate compactor on the left and right channels. So if you have a lot of fast-moving, uncorrelating material in the separate channels, you can process them independently without collateral damage. A big peak in the right channel won't duck both channels equally, it'll just duck the right channel, leaving that much more energy in the left. So if you like, you can set up a DAW template or download one of the ones we've prepared, which give you a series of cascading priority groups so Compactor can quietly go about its business and make your mix a breeze. And please do share your thoughts and sounds in the comments. We hope you enjoy this new freebie.